I saw, I, saw, I saw a weird cut up video that I didn't know if it was a oh, real video. Or that's not. probably one of them Pink Trip videos. Oh, my, it was 100%. very funny. Yeah, it was very funny. Pink Trip. I, Shout I out to believe. Pink Trip. Pink Trip is hilarious. He's a guy on uh, the internet who takes clips of podcasts and creates narratives of things that are totally not happening. Oh, yeah, I've seen some like of this you. one recently, me and Tucker Carlson are having an argument. I haven't seen that one. It's, it's good. Space is fake. But it's 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 visible. What? No. Space is real. Are you joking? You're a science denier. What? Stop. The the bodies of science have bestowed the truth. If you ignore it. If I get it, another fucking lecture from you, I'm gonna go crazy. When did you start having this opinion? Shut the fuck up, bitch. You're a fucking idiot. Don't do that anymore. What are you gonna do about it, bitch? What are you gonna do about it? You are literally powerless. Yeah. I'm just gonna do whatever I want. Not a lot you can do about it. You could get your ass kicked. Wait, are you threatening me? Yeah. <laughs> I think you are a far right, white supremacist, racist. I have racist. no respect for you. You're like my dog. Does it ever occur to you that you're like disgusting? Just like vulgar, just like a pig. If I were to sort of narrow down my bigotries, it's like people like you, I just think you're disgusting. <laughs> I'm better than you. I'm the best talker in America. And you're like, some wacko. You're a real freak. If I take a nine millimeter router, 762 by 39 and shoot you, can you catch the bullet? You can't do that. What are you gonna do about it? I got a bigger one. Why would you hide that? That's just wrong. That's not fair. <laughs>found you probably when you were around like a few thousand followers and now you're like up to 250k so on youtube and you found me you on know, youtube 100. when i was a couple thousand followers i found you on probably instagram you know okay. like I, I remember i remember seeing it and then going to your profile and being like how is how does this guy not have like a million followers this is like this is incredible <laughs> i wonder um, the same thing every day dude no, yeah. i mean uh I, they, they don't like me dude they don't they don't my shit is too edgy i think is the problem you know. Who is they? Which platform do you say doesn't like you? All of them. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> every single uh, one. If I start blowing up, they always come down on me. Every every time I have like a huge, like I start having success, they come down yeah. and all of a sudden it's not advertiser friendly and blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. well, well, you've grown a ton since the yeah. early days, like t in the two or three years ago for sure. So you know me from Instagram, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably Okay, right okay. Because it's different. Like, my, my Instagram path happened a lot later. Like, I, mm -hmm. I really started on YouTube, like, late 2017. Oh, okay. And, um, no, so, yeah, and then, because I, I, I hate Facebook. I hate Instagram. Uh -huh. I, so it took me a long time to just, people just kept saying, you got to put it on Instagram. And so then I, mm -hmm. I, I started venturing out. And I've had a lot of success on Instagram, so I can't really mm -hmm. complain too much. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Just to set it up, just for folks watching, we're here with uh, Mark, uh, also known as Ping Trip on yes. Instagram, YouTube, and you've definitely, if you don't know his face, you have definitely seen his work, phenomenal editing of the long form podcast game, sort of a digital troll, so to speak, creating some of the greatest <laughs> re-edits yeah. of Rogan podcasts we've seen. And I just wanted to ask, Mark, like, in your history of content creation, what was, was this your first iteration or, like, attempt at the grind of, of content creation on social media? Like, how did it start for you? No, um, you know, I, I started doing just simple sketches and shit. Like, if you go to my, my YouTube page and you sort by oldest, like, you'll see the first video I did was, was mm -hmm. just a basic, you know, comedy sketch where, um... You remember back uh, late 2017, 2018, where Alexa, there was like a, con a, a controversy where if you asked Alexa who Jesus Christ was, it would say, Jesus Christ is a fictional character. Remember that? <laughs> okay. So I don't, I did a, but I'll take your word yeah, for it. I did We're Jews, so we happen to believe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, I'm, not, I'm not like, I was raised Catholic, but I'm not like hardcore. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I made a parody of um, Alexa, but instead of Alexa, it was like the conservative Alexa with Alex Jones. <laughs> doing the voice for alexa which right. i wasn't the only person that came up with that idea people were like oh you ripped it off i was like it's a pretty obvious idea it's not very you know it's not that complicated right. for it's like everybody 
what do they call that where people have the same ideas all the time? Like uh, uh, like a collective not consciousness rip- thing. Well, not yeah, like yeah, like, like ripping somebody off, but like where you both have the same idea. Like it happens yeah. right. a lot. Yeah. Right, it's yeah. out there, and it's sort of like where where it originates is because it's such a yeah. yeah if, if, if but mine was it, mine was better, so yeah. <laughs> so it was like what Alexa? Alexa's gonna tell you what time it is. What time? Do you know what time it is? Time to get under the bunker because the world's coming on in. Alexa, it was like uh, Alex Jones, Alexa, Alexa you, Jones. You guys are welcome <laughs> to find it and play it if you want to. It's, <laughs> okay, it's we'll hard roll to explain it. But, yeah, um, that's very yeah, if you funny, go so. if you go by Otis, you'll see it. Meet meet uh, Ale- meet Alex, the conservative Alexa. So that that Alexa one actually, Jones. <laughs> that one actually did pretty good. Like it got, I had like no followers, so it got a couple mm-hmm. thousand views or whatever, which was a lot when you like have fifty subscribers. Yeah, and um, and then one day I just was like, I you know whatever ideas came to me, uh, like that's what I would make, and then I got an idea watching Rogan, and mm-hmm. uh, Tom DeLonge. You mm-hmm. know, it was the beginning of Sober October, and Joe Rogan was completely bored out of his mind with Tom DeLonge. So, I just started getting all these ideas of like ways to like make Rogan look like he really hates Tom DeLonge. And that was like the birth of the, the Joe Rogan supercuts, but it wasn't really what planned I, out. It just ideas came to me. So I just was like, all right, let me make it. What's so good about your supercuts to me. It's like the, the editing is great, obviously, but Thank you, sir. you, you find a way to really um, pinpoint the social dynamic between the guest and, and Joe. Like, I yeah. mean, to me, that's the genius of it. Like, you, you yeah. like that's the, that's the real joke. You really you really nail it. It's know, almost like that's... a conversation between their subconsciousnesses. The, the shadow, yeah, like, yeah. like Jordan the Peterson would say the Jungian, exactly. the Jungian the shadow, shadow, you know, whatever. yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Is is that yeah. something you're aware of, or that or that's just like, dude, that's something I, you work I, on? I just I, I get really stoned, and I just come <laughs> up with crazy shit for them to say. That I mean, uh, it's. It usually starts with like one little idea, like one little thing that I pick up on, like Joe's makes this weird face or something like that. It's yeah. like, it always starts with like one little idea from something Joe does or something Joe says. And then from there, I just build upon it. Right. And, uh, and so, yeah. Yeah. Once you think of like a, do you find a funny thing and say, okay, I have to find stuff that's going to tell the story in this way. Like yeah. you have a bulge. If they say that you're like, okay, I'm going to build the story around this idea of them talking about Joe's crotch. And then yeah. what's just geek out with me for a second. Cause it's so thorough and there's such long episodes. How do you scour and skim the episode for all the stuff that will reinforce a premise? Well, you know, now that the episodes are back on YouTube, you can just show transcript on YouTube mm. and then control F and try to find uh, what you need to find. Right. Uh, and um, once you get into a higher level, that's when you start with like word mixing and sentence mixing. Right. So yeah, I, I, I use what I have. And if, if I need to sentence mix or word mix to like fill in the story or to like create a punchline, that's not there. Yeah. Uh, then I do that as well, which is really the tricky part because that that's mm. like, I'm sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm splicing word for word, like a whole sentence. So I'll sure. find like five, I'll find each word individually in different places. And that can be difficult because you got to find the right intonation so that it blends mm-hmm. in and doesn't sound harsh. So you, are so, you using audio software and video software to kind of stitch it together? Just, just, just Premiere Pro, you know, right? Just, just, yeah. you just go by ear. You, <laughs> you put the like if if I want uh, Joe saying like what the fuck or something like that, you know, you find what the and then fuck, mm-hmm. and you just play with them till they kind of sound natural. You might need to do a little bit of um, audio transition to kind of sure. you know, smooth it out a little bit, but it's all by ear. Like I'm not an audio nothing. I'm not an. Yeah. I'm not even that good at editing, dude. Like I. I watched, I, I got trapped in this like YouTube spiral of like these expert editors, like trying to sell you their editing packages. And then mm-hmm. in their video, it's like, oh, just super duper editing where every two seconds there's like a boom. and then a whoosh, whoosh, boom. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. And too, I'm like, where they try to pitch you. Stop. They make me feel like I can't edit worth a shit, but it's really over editing is what it is. It's, it's like, very Gen Z, like over stimulati. Like let's yeah, throw it's as Mr. Many Beast things bullshit. In. It's Mr. Yeah. Beast bullshit where it's like every 10 seconds or two or three seconds there's a boom a cinematic hit and then yeah. the transition comes in with a whooshing sound and it's just that yeah. over and over for like 10 minutes as fast as they can go did and you do the mr beast yet. rogan edit have you done one of the, one on that mr it was, beast a, it was a shitty episode dude <laughs> it's hard it's hard there's, there's a lot of episodes that in theory like oh mr beast and joe rogan but it's like mm-hmm. sometimes there's just nothing there that really sparks an idea mm-hmm. and maybe so if i you, go back you... to it and watch it again for maybe you know so it's never a, a straight no, but at this moment, there's no ideas. 
Is mm-hmm. it possible you're not getting high enough? Like, <laughs> well, I might be getting too high. That might be the problem. <laughs> Do, I, oh, I yeah. picture you standing like uh, in Batman, uh, Morgan Freeman, in front of a monitor of Rogan <laughs> episodes, and you're just like, hmm. yeah. How many? How much Rogan are you consuming weekly? Mo- not as much as people would think, because yeah. it's it's difficult. That's, that's, just, that's like yeah. sitting through a four hour. I, I'm I'm not someone who really likes podcasts that much. So sitting through a four hour episode is very <laughs> difficult for me. <laughs> You know, oh, you you're the anti podcast, and you're yeah. saying, well, you're out to destroy them in a sense. But it's uh, it's amazing. So I'm then like, on the on the on the B roll side, when you got to capture all those faces, you just kind of skim the episode and get expressions that you could use well, yeah, to interchange. If, if, if I decide I'm doing an episode, I watch all four hours, and mm. with I got to be zoned in for every second that I'm watching. Right, and it's and a, it's you... a different experience than just sitting back and watching the episode because you'll mm. sit back like when you're driving, and ten minutes will pass by, and you're like. Oh, where 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 was I? You know, right. you got to avoid that happening because I might miss something in that ten minutes. Yeah. So that makes a four hour episode take about sixteen hours to watch because <laughs> wow. I have to take breaks like every thirty minutes because I start losing focus because mm-hmm. I'm already like ADD through the fucking roof. So, right. <laughs> and, and then you got like a library of effects and stuff you're you're throwing in like for those dramatic transitions or the music or things like that. Yeah, that I just seamlessly... pull whatever I can find from like <laughs> epidemic sound, and I, I used to use yeah. story blocks, but they're like charging way too much now. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I try to not do too many of the cinematic hits anymore because it just right. seems seems kind of cheesy. You know, I mm-hmm. think if you if you can't like edit something to be good without having to use all these little crutches, sound effects, and whooshes and everything, it's you know. Plus, I, I'm kind of a slow burn, kind of like fill the pace of the edit and every whatever now and serves then the a, comedy. You know, I feel every like now and then there's a the place. Comedy. Yeah, there's a place yeah. for a cinematic hit, yeah. but I think people overdo that shit. Um. It's it's really awesome. And then when you, when you landed on that, you just, you you just went full force on that. I, I saw. I thought at some point you had a podcast. Yeah, I'm still doing live streams on my channel. I just did one the other night. Yeah, mm, I, I, like I, I've I always. It. It, this is a, a frustrating part for me right now because mm. I've always done other content. I've all, I've I've always done other. I've been doing live streams since 2018, mm. but because one thing went more viral than everything else. I, I get a lot of people that get upset anytime I do anything else. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. You become trapped by your own creations. Everybody yeah. experiences this. Yeah. And, Are you talking to up, Gary V over here? You know, I'm the, I was the Gary V guy for a long time. Uh, exclusively the, Gary V. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, but I didn't follow, yeah. follow. I know the name, but I don't like. Well, no, no. I started my TikTok first viral videos in my case were like Gary V impressions. So, oh, okay, I, I get you. I yeah. did lean into it because I got some advice from other content creators who were like, "Look, just because something pops off once doesn't mean like you move on to other things. Like, lean into it. It's like your hit song. Mm-hmm. So you figure, why not? So I basically squeezed as much creative juice, just like in the way you're doing, out of a particular thing that does work and it's fun. But you have to also be careful to keep yourself creatively sane by by doing things that you still really like before you get exhausted by the same pattern of yeah. things and not become the Gary V guy. I mean, I do Gary V impressions like it's a real shit. Like love what you're doing. Editing is amazing. Right. Like that's how he talks. But, and it actually took me all the way to like, dude. thank you, man. It, it, it took me all the way to VCon where I opened the ceremony with him and it was like this exciting time, but I eventually did move on to other things and do all these other things. And I think in your case, I'd like to hear more about that. Like you become known for this thing. There's this positive feedback loop. These are insanely good. They're insanely viral, but it's not the totality of who you are as a creative. Plus the art itself doesn't have you in it. So yeah. you're in a way your work is more known than you are. How do you 100%. contend with that? No one knows yeah. who the fuck I am. I kind of <laughs> like that. Nobody knows who I am, Yeah. but there is something where it's like, you make way less money if you're not the personality on the mm-hmm. camera, mm-hmm. you know, like trying to sell merch. Just anything outside of just give me that video, you know, with the personalities I like. It's 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 it's, it's, it's hard. It's difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for free as well. Yeah. yeah. God forbid I put something behind members only. I get a result. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Well, yeah. I how do you? Go yeah. ahead, man. Good. No, I was just gonna say, how do you how do you combat that? Because I've I've even seen your stuff. People going. Whoever made this is amazing. Didn't you just had one by Riley shared it herself, which was amazing. So first of all, yeah. hitting your targets is incredibly satisfying. I want to hear about that. It happens a and, lot, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really expect it. It's kind of always a surprise. I'm always mm-hmm. kind of scared that they're going to be like, oh, this creepy ass dude made the, you know, that they're not going to see the comedy of it because mm-hmm. it happens, you know, where people just get offended by something that's just supposed to make you laugh. Yeah. Um. So I always have that fear. So it's nice when they embrace it, you know, and, mm-hmm. Yeah, she didn't put my name in there, but she shared my she shared like my video with my name at the bottom. So that was a little weird. Okay, yeah. 
that was a little weird that she's like, whoever made this while she's sharing it like directly from my, my page. Oh. But I get it. A lot of people just Maybe she thought it was a meme memes. account. Yeah. yeah so, so I get it because it's, it's most of the time you see a meme, it's not from the fucking person who made it. Mm-hmm. It's from somebody else sharing it. So yeah. I get why she said that. But it, Rogan himself has research. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Rogan himself has shared your stuff too, right? Yeah, it, yeah, Rogan. Um, I've been shouted out quite a few times. Um, I, the Jesse May Paluzzo episode, and yeah. I don't know, it's like four or five episodes now. How, how does that feel when your friend texts you and is like, "Yo, check <laughs> yeah. out this episode"? <laughs> my friends don't give a shit. I don't. My friends don't watch Rogan. It's always all <laughs> internet. You know, I'll get a, I'll get like Twitter shit. But yeah, my yeah. my friends and family do not give a shit about my my pink trip shit they just don't. <laughs> which is which is nice it's like separate yeah. from like my actual life you know right what can i ask what is your like what is your actual life outside of the content creation here? trying to figure out how to make more money off of this shit how to yeah. break through with the algorithms and and like actually sustain success because that's mm. that's it's so fucking difficult you know especially right. with this type of content it's so i can't just whip them out every like most of the really successful content is like everyday shit you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. I, I just, this is like, I, I can be lucky one every two weeks to a month because I just don't want to just make them just to make them. I, I, I got to enjoy the process. I got to be inspired by an idea. You I've make it there, once a, yeah. Your frequency in terms of an episode, like edit, is it like a once a month or once every other week kind of thing? Or like when it just strikes uh, Sometimes you? I can, pu- I can pump out one a week if I'm getting idea. Cause it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'm just sucky as a creator or, or mm-hmm. what it is, but I can't just keep having ideas over and over. There are times where it's like, I have nothing mm-hmm. and I can't just go, well, let me just force something. I mean, I could do mm-hmm. that, but it wouldn't yeah. result in an inspired work. It would mm-hmm. result in just, just throwing shit out there. Right. So that, that, that's a difficult thing. That's why I'd like to make other content too, because it's kind of a break from the monotony of just that one thing, you know? It, it would be so meta if you got on Rogan as a guest and then you did your own episode. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that That's going to happen. Yeah. Let's manifest uh, it. That I mean, market's I would, on it as Pink Trip, and then you and you edit yeah. your own episode to be whatever you want. I, I, I almost, because the few times he shouted me out and he said Pink Trip, I almost... I had the idea, but I never followed through with it of like making an episode where he's just like pissed off at me, you know, <laughs> oh, he you wants to totally kill me. do that. Dude. Oh, yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Um, oh, yeah. Totally if I ever got it. on Rogan, I definitely would have to make something like it. Nobody would let me not make something, right. but then they would probably be like, Oh, this isn't as good as the other stuff. You know, uh-huh. it's not as good yeah. when you're in it, dude. That's, uh-huh. that's the shit out here. I mean, just that's so meta for you to edit your own episode. If that's the right word. I mean, what a trip yeah. that would be. To edit your own episode. It's the right word. What? It's the right word. It's the right word. It's meta. I like it. People use it, but I don't know how to use it. But it kind of makes, it feels right that it's the right thing to do. I I have done like those fake, you know, like the Weird Al Yankovic does where he's like cuts the other person up like he's interviewing them, but he's not really. I've done shit like that before that I thought was pretty, pretty damn amazing. But that's Mm -hmm. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Are you studying these other podcasters like? Like when Tim Dillon comes on, are you like very familiar with him? Are you very familiar with the Weinsteins and like that whole uh, ecosystem? Or are you, are you I, seeing it, them for the first time on? Yeah, the, on like Rogan? the Dark Horse podcast and mm-hmm. um, the the one Brett does with his wife. That that's a yeah. during during it's, the, it's called Brett and his wife. <laughs> a lot Brett of sexual ten- there's a lot of sexual tension on that. I one. like, like They're wife. about to make out. His yeah. wife, I don't know, there's something spicy about his wife. But yeah, I, I, <laughs> there's something just like... Well, because the whole like podcast, she's talking teacher, like this, you know? Brett, you know, the whole time, you know, the thing is with COVID-19 and these vaccines, I want you to stick me with a vaccine, Brett. Well, we need to be very careful. <laughs> the, you know, That's pretty before, good. I knew, <laughs> before I knew they were married, I'm like, there is so much sexual tension on yeah, this podcast. Yeah. I thought they were just like colleagues. That's, one, that's in wonderful. A lab. Yeah, good for, for them. A married couple, yeah. yeah. Oh, so you kind of know a little bit about it to kind of know where yeah. how to like uh, highlight always, the features. I'm always on the lookout for, for yeah. a podcast to make, you know, um, mm-hmm. I'll usually give a, a podcast like 20 to 30 minutes to see if I got some sort mm-hmm. of something sparking some sort of interest in it. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of it is the characters too, you know, like David, like I, I've done a couple of David Lee Roth. I'm like almost every, ep- like oh, if yeah. David Lee Roth came on Rogan again, I'd work on it immediately because he's such a strange, odd character. It just gives, yes. it just works really well for this type of edit. Um, Alex Jones is another one that like, oh. as soon as he's on Rogan, it's like, I'm working on that one. You know, I love you. Yeah. I want to yeah. hold you. you. That was an incredible you one. You really was... <laughs> like nail the, like 
the underbelly of the Rogan verse that like <laughs> like he presents as like this this human being, but he's really just this like beast. <laughs> like there's something there's... so poignant about it. Visceral. The yeah. animal the animal <laughs> underneath everyone is revealed. Like this sort of subhuman sub subterranean like yeah, thing. Yeah. But there's yeah, some yeah. truth. Like I wouldn't say Rogan eats people. Like I wouldn't go that far, yeah. but if you he would, Rogan, he would, he would, he would. If you've yeah, heard right. Rogan talk about his psyche, that mm-hmm. dude is in there, dude. That 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 beast of like he's talked about it before. Like when he works out, he imagines like somebody trying to like R word his family, <laughs> yeah. and he's trying to rescue him. Like that's how he gets. I mean, like yeah. he's 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 yeah, he's grown cannibals. Yeah, he's a good dude yeah. though. I love Rogan. Yeah, yeah and but, the faces. I mean, like Lee Roth the f- and Rogan. The the B roll and the expressions you can spin any which way. So it's such comedic opportunity it, to Rogan's react. Rogan's got to the anything. greatest faces too, dude. Yeah. Like he just will look angry as fuck over the yeah. simplest <sighs> shit. Like it would be like, so what do you think about comedy? And then like the face he makes is yeah, like he just goes. Yeah, yeah this guy gets can, on stage and he just goes. You could spin it to anything because he yeah. just oh looks God. so pissed off all the time. And it's that dynamic also of like he's. He, he's acting as if like I'm just a guy and you're just on my show and we're all friends. But like you really get to the like, I made five hundred million dollars in the last four years. <laughs> he's so much better than everybody <laughs> like, else. Like yeah. what are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, and, and outside of this, outside of this type of creation stuff, when you live stream, what's what's that centered around? Just take me into the other Pink Trip Creative Universe spaces that you're interested in. Dude, it's 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 the bare boniest of bare bones live stream ever. I just go mm-hmm. on, I chat with the audience, I react to videos. It's basically a hangout session, mm-hmm. you know. I've thought about making it more because if you want something to be successful, you gotta like clickbait around like whatever shit's going on. Like right now, mm-hmm. it'd be like Mr. Beast is blah blah blah. You know, that's mm-hmm. the clickbait shit. So I've yeah. thought about going that angle just to get more views on it, you know. But um, yeah, it's just basically whatever's going on at that time. I feel like talking about, and then a lot of audience interaction. Is it political stuff? What What do you mean? Yeah, like, I'll talk about I'll talk about anything. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what one thing? I mean, unsolicited advice, but like all the besides the podcast space, like you know the did you, I'm, you, I'm sure you, maybe you do this already. Forgive me if I don't know about it, but like a Trump Biden debate ping tripped would be unbelievable. I'm maybe it's harder than that territory these days, dude, because they're, they're like, they're trying to make that, that, that Reagan dude who made um, the, the Kamala AI video. Uh-huh. Have you seen yes. that? Like they're, they're the, literally, they're literally going to try that. to make that illegal and do another, like they locked yeah. that dude up in Florida for doing that Hillary Clinton meme about like, oh. just text this number if you want to vote. And they're like, Oh, this affected actual voters. Oh, it's clear. It was clearly a, a fucking joke meme. Right. Yeah. So if I make fun of Trump, it's fine. Yeah. If I make fun of Alex Jones, it's fine. Uh-huh. If I make fun of Kamala Harris, all of a sudden it's a problem. This is, well, this is a reality yeah. with these platforms and mm-hmm. I like being monetized. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I like yeah, being yeah. able to make money off my work. So yeah, I have, if you go look in 2020, I made, um, a democratic primary cut. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was amazing. And then I made a, a cut, um, of, uh, the Biden Trump debate. So, yeah. And, uh, I had a lot of, oh, you did. Yeah. And I, and my, my views oh, went way down after I did that. So it was just really? that's that so weird. You know, I, I, I'm always on the fence about like the shadow banning of these tech things. If they're all algorithmically driven, how much control based on their political biases do they really oh, have? I think people do think- don't, I think people really need to come to grips with mm-hmm. how powerful the algorithm is for controlling society, controlling voters. I mean, you, you're controlling all the information people get. Right. I know. I get that. I'm just, you know, I know that Google can flag and, and, and promote searches and squash searches. They do well, have the capa- they have capability, but I mean, like when I do impressions, for example, like my Kamala Harris video popped off on TikTok. I'm making fun of her, but I don't feel like I get punished for particular political angles necessarily. But I just, I think, so I just, I think because you're doing an impersonation, you're fine. But what yeah. I do, they already trying to say it's AI. I don't use AI, but they're yeah. already, I already have to like label my shit on YouTube. Probably Instagram's going to be next where I have to label uh-huh. it as altered content. Uh-huh. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, there, oh, cause there's a, there, yeah, because you're he's repurposing re-editing it. stuff to make it. Yeah, seem I'm. I'm editing. I am. You know, by YouTube's own guidelines, right? They came out with this altered content policy. It's not just AI. If I edit somebody to say something they didn't say, then I have to flag it as altered content. So that's another thing I've had to do is go back and flag all my videos as altered content. So there's a a banner at the bottom. So you don't get the copyright strike for using the footage or something. Is that also because they recognize it from the no? It's, no, it's like I a don't, misinformation thing, right? Yeah, yeah no, so it's yeah, it's it's. 
it's just they don't want people to be fooled by AI. It's it's the whole right. AI fear bullshit where mm-hmm. it's like, you know, people are going to figure it out. It's like I think it's yeah. a little bit overblown. It's going to be like Photoshop. People are, are going to evolve and be like, oh, OK, you just can't trust a video on the on the surface like you can't trust a photo. Right. Big deal. You know, but <laughs> but there it's it's becoming this thing where I can see where they're going, which where is trying to make it going. illegal. I mean, Gavin Newsom's already said he wants to make it illegal in California. Right. Whatever happened to the Reagan guys well, the, to the to the cut? Did anything happen for the creator of that? Did you see the Not Kamala on Twitter, ad? Right? Yeah, was, what are you talking about? It was a, there it. was this ad of Kamala Harris saying like, basically she's like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm running in 2024. We all knew Joe Biden was bullshit, and he dropped that. It's like sounds so yeah. authentic, and she's like. So move over, bitches. I'm taking over. And you're going to vote for me because that's what we're going to pretend like I'm an amazing catch. And it's like, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm Kamala Harris and I approved this message. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, but it's, it's fake, very, but yeah, it's right? hilarious. It's, <laughs> on the surface, it sounds real. The video looks yeah. real. The audio, well, the video, they don't show her. They just show like B-roll of her actually talking. Yeah, yeah, walking. Yeah, yeah. But the content of it makes it clear it's a parody. But yet they're like, everybody's a retard. Nobody's going to be able to figure it out when everybody can see it. Everybody knows it's a parody except for like, I don't know, people that watch 10 seconds of it and just share sure. it. Boomers, boomers. Like my parents will be like, oh my God, would she say that? But whatever, <laughs> they're going to fall for anything technological. Well, you have to the, learn at some point, right? You can't coddle yeah, everybody. Like I'm with you. People got to learn like, oh, okay, I got fooled. Now next time I'm going to be a little wiser. Did anything happen to the creator of that in any sort of penalizing way? Or, I, 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 mean, I, don't, I mean, I know that they, they, sh- they when Elon shared it, they were like, this is illegal. <laughs> this is election interference. And then Gavin oh. Newsom came out and said he's going to make that illegal oh, to share that kind of content what a snake. um i, I don't know like ex- he he might have got hit on youtube or instagram i, I know it's yeah. still up on twitter but i don't know what happened on any other platform but on twitter I, it's blown the fuck up but that's twitter, yeah, of you course know? it's twitter yeah. has there been anything consequential for you in terms of punitive consequences for the content you've made thus far like a youtube strike or warnings anything that like that based yeah, on a, altered I content a, i got a youtube strike back in 2020 mm-hmm. i made a, a two-part series alex jones versus bill gates <laughs> and um it was uh the, the first one is still up and monetized the second one though because i showed um a, a picture of starving african children it was considered mm-hmm. hate speech because i because that's what alex jones was rightfully talking about how our lockdowns were going to actually cause yeah children to starve to death in africa so i showed a picture of african children who i mean it wasn't like uh them starving with their ribs out it was just regular ass african children Mm-hmm. over him saying that. And I got a hate speech violation right. for that or some, something like that. During COVID, I remember like, if you said the word COVID in an episode of anything, yeah, your episode it. got flagged yeah. for, you know, learn more about COVID-19. It was like insane. Like you really felt like you were in some sort of totalitarian digital state yeah. online. Yeah, which yeah was I think a lot of, I mean, if people didn't wake up during COVID as to like how authoritarian and fucked up the system we're living in right now is, then I don't know mm-hmm. what will wake them up. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I did some, I was, I was suspect, I was sus about COVID from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, so I did a few live streams. I called them lockdown chat downs where mm-hmm. I was like, it was very, at the very beginning, I was like, this is going to drag on for a long time. And this is, mm-hmm. in my opinion, it was about the election. It was really like, without COVID, they wouldn't have won the election. And even back then I could just see like, this is their way to destroy Trump's economy. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they went and brought in new rules, new election rules around COVID that really helped the Democrats out. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, I deleted those streams pretty quickly after I posted them. Cause I let's get this up. episode flagged. Keep going. Yeah. Keep Are keep you going, on YouTube Mark. right now? Are you live on YouTube? Um, not at the moment, but it'll be. Okay. Yeah. You're going to edit it can, though, right? That's okay. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I talk like, I think no, it's fine I, at this point. I, I understand the the, the the fear, though. Like everybody's No, but I feel like we're shows. past that point. They're not as like crazy we about We get demonetized. Well. Anytime I mention Hamas or Gaza or mm. Israel yeah. in any of our content, we get de- we get demonetized. Yeah. Not fully, but it'll get flagged for like ad suitability. Uh-huh. Yeah, because you're not uh-huh. an authoritative source. You're just a regular dude. If you were CNN, you could talk about whatever you want. Right. right. Their policies are so, so fucked, dude. Really well, I mean, well, it's weird because it's they, there's clearly a program that just sees the word Hamas mm-hmm. and puts everything with that word into demonetization, and they hope, I guess, they hope no not, one complains about but it. But see, but not for CNN, not for mm-hmm. not for if if you're an authoritative source, which basically means you work for a corporation, a corporate news outf- outfit. Mm-hmm. They they have the white they're they're white flagged or whatever. Just talk about all that shit. I right? wonder but if regular, there's like a journalistic pass. Yeah. Well, they yes, have relationships with YouTube. Yeah. They have relationships also with yeah. people at YouTube. 
you know? Right, 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 right. That's right. just all labels in the code, man. You either mm-hmm. you're, you're either green lit because you're considered author, author authoritative source, or you're not. You know, there's all yeah, kinds. Sanjay, of- Sanjay Gupta can deny the Holocaust if he wants. I mean, he's just <laughs> totally. Does that, did that happen? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sanjay Gupta, the doctor, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, brain yeah. as the, a doctor. The doctor. <laughs> the cannibal yeah, doctor. doctor. Yeah. As a doctor. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you've made it this far, we want to let you know that Ami's House is now on Patreon. We love doing extra content, bonus footage with every episode. The best way to support us is to head on over to Patreon, become a guest, and support the show for five dollars a month. If you like watching Ami cut me off, Patreon is a patreon.com slash Ami's House for bonus content. Thanks so much for your support and become a guest. Um, on the subject, actually, of, um, you know, like you're saying, you're trying to figure out the business end of content creation, because I'm in this space a lot now where I'm meeting a lot of people sort of in our world of like, you have a lot of attention, right? There's a lot of people who've seen your work. There's, it has a lot of reach. And then how to actually, you know, the, but there's a difference between a YouTuber and a content creator and a business person, an entrepreneur who's running a business. Yeah. So how have you been, how have you been faring with that in terms of implementing ways to like take the followers you have and convert those into an actual supportive community that's paying for your work, that wants to see you do more of your stuff, you know, that, that turns it into a sustainable business. I'm in that sort of exact space now as we're trying to build up patrons for our Patreon page on the podcast. And you speak to a lot of creatives in this space who have success in terms of, in terms of reach and they have audience, but they don't have business yet. You know, I I think that's, that's a a very difficult thing to Mm -hmm. convert people that are used to getting your stuff for free and getting them to pay. It's easier right. when you have a podcast. If you have a podcast mm-hmm. and you have a large audience, you're going to get more support. That's another thing. One of the downsides of being behind the scenes where a lot of my, like most of my stuff that people know me for is all the stuff that's behind the scenes. You know, mm-hmm. people don't support that kind of content the same way they support their favorite podcast or yada yada you know mm-hmm. so i i don't do much of the tr- i mean i have a members only like youtube like you can sign up there's a lot of old mm-hmm. content that was demonetized that i put behind a members only wall but mostly most of my money is from ad revenue dude you know mm-hmm. that's 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 the the sad part is like i'm i'm mm-hmm. reliant on that ad revenue and there i did make good money with ad revenue at one point when i was earning on facebook and youtube but you know facebook's a hellhole that just yeah I, I've heard so many horror stories that people have been through what I go through, which is all of a sudden you're going viral, making 10, 20 grand a month. And then they just shut it down for like, it's always the same thing, reused content or whatever. Like I, for me, you go, Oh, well that makes sense. Reuse content. Well, I own all of my content. I have no copyright issues. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you understand like fair use law, trans, what's, what's sure. equals transformative, you know, the parody protections, all, like I, I have no legal problems with my, my content, but Facebook takes it on their own accord to do that, which mm. So then I'm just left with YouTube and then the Instagram bonuses and shit. And like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not, a, it's not, I'm not making a great living, but I'm okay yeah. with being a starving artist. That's fine. <laughs> you, you strike me as someone who could set up a Patre- Patreon and like one of those accounts that aren't even offering anything bonus, just like, hey, please give me five a month just to support <laughs> me so I can keep doing this. A lot of people make a hundred thousand yeah. a month just being like, there's no, nothing new here. Just I'm, give me money because you I, like because I can't do this without your help. Yeah. Or you do the live streams behind the paywall and talk about your process and show behind the scenes edits and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, you could geek out on all these different things. But again, really, that does work for people. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of podcasts do it. Yeah. Um, I think Shane and Shane, Matt and Shane, I'm yeah. pretty sure their five dollar tier is just get the podcast here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Instead of going to YouTube, just get right. them here for five a month. Maybe so there's a we, threshold we, you reach in terms of fan base that oh, like, there's enough for, of that. For sure. But I mean, I think what you're doing is like, and of course, I'm sure you thought of this, but mm-hmm. like you know, what you're doing is unique and, and I think brilliant enough that like um, enough people out there be like, dude, I like you. And I, you know, I, I'm unhappy at my job and I want you to be happy at your job. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that, man. Yeah. 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 I, I think at some point Not I may me, go. But- I, I may yeah. go the Patreon route again. Um, I just don't like. I, I, I'm kind of probably saving it if like I have to do it, I'll do it. You know. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to like ask people for money. Right. I just yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah. do it. I don't know. Wow. Maybe it's stupid of me to not want to be like, hey, just give me money. I like right. the relationship of just being able to put content out, yeah. let the platforms put their advertisements. I, I like that because then I'm like. Yeah hands off i just make my content but so, i may have to at some time one other thing i'm th- i've been thinking about doing is just like opening myself up for commission work just just mm-hmm. putting a post out on instagram being like uh you know the next i, I got 10 spots for for edits if you want an edit for your podcast you know yeah. hit me up 
And just if you can like, make everybody's podcast funnier. I mean, to get ping tripped would be the funniest thing. First of all, you could like expand your targets and like do a do like ping trip a, a morning show with these. I I, I don't know if you've yeah. done that already, but like you know, like all that kind of stuff outside even the podcast space. There's so many things to uh, to tackle, but like I'm sure so many up and coming podcasts would want mm-hmm. like as a way to to spice up whatever they're doing. Get I mean. It sounds get, hard it to sounds get ping trip, but you also want to find funny things. And if yeah. it's a bad podcast, but maybe I don't know. I I I I don't put it past you. I think you could. You have the skill set clearly to to find it. But I know what you mean that certain ones are harder than others. But yeah, the skill set of your unique style of editing is truly its own thing. So, yeah. how do you, I have a logistical question? Yeah. How do you literally get the episode to start editing from? Do you like screen? you know record it i used to screen record but uh I, mm. I i don't know if i can spill the beans on how i do it that might throw okay. me in jail all right um yeah no nah, there's there's programs <laughs> so it's not to, totally legal <laughs> the, no we don't have to you don't have to if you're not comfortable there's programs yeah, you, don't have to tell us. That's all right. you can just throw yeah. the link in there and it'll download the video for you yeah. oh like i have that like youtube to mp3 type of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. 4k, 4K downloaders is the one i i, I like uh, that's yeah, what i cool. use but um, no, I don't actually use that. That's just in theory how I would get it. Because technically, you're not it. supposed to do that with YouTube. Yes, yes. So in you? theory, if one wanted to, they would yeah. use something of that nature. Yeah, no, I think that stuff's awful, also. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's just like, what do you expect me to do, YouTube? You expect me to fucking screen record four hour episodes yeah. every time? It's like, yeah. no. Well, when I can just download it in like five seconds, I have it. You know, everybody kind of understands for the power. Everybody understands parody, and we're in this economy in the digital world, in like online media, where everybody. Sharing everything constantly, reclipping, repurposing, commenting, reacting to. So I just find that you know there's a little bit of a wild west going on. But for the creative person, it, it's a double edged sword. But it's beneficial to be able to access this stuff and then repurpose it. I like this sort of like I identify a lot with like the no one is safe category, especially when I'm doing impressions and parody of other things in the form of impressions. Like I just kind of go with what I really like. People are like, you know, who do you decide to do next? I'm like, if I find funny in something like a, yeah. a, a flagrant two video that's funny and they have a guest that I can do and I'll try to do a whole impersonation of the episode. I've done entire Rogan like sketches where I do everybody from Tim, Rogan and and Alex all like talking about something or Jordan Peterson in that like Rogan verse. So I feel like there's a similar angle of like no one is safe. Everyone can get ping tripped. Yeah. You can find yourself on the wrong side of an edit. <laughs> ping trip in the view would be great. <laughs> oh shit! I thought about that. It's, it's hard when there's not. Th- th- what's great about Rogan is it's four hours. There's a lot of there's a lot of lines yeah. there. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can make him say anything. Like I got mm-hmm. thousands of episodes. I can go through the transcripts of and and take pieces of of, of audio and make him say mm-hmm. anything. That's right. not as easy with the view, you know. Yeah. Right. Sound bite segments, quick quick cuts. Not and saying stuff it like can't that. happen. Like you can, you know. Yeah. It's just again. Sure. Joy I'm limited Bay by Artists my brain's I, I, I de- ability to come with come up with good ideas that yeah you know spark spark yeah. something. Um, but you were saying like uh, uh, maybe I'm confused, but you're saying nobody's safe. Okay, you're talking about people to make fun of, right? I was, yeah, I, like when you first said that, I was thinking this is how I am right now. Like, yeah, nobody's uh, safe. Anybody can be banned at any moment. <laughs> yes, that I was. I, that's true too. I was. I, I meant from a creative targeting standpoint, like you, you do the Rogan stuff with Danny yeah. Polishnik. I might be no. saying his last name. Uh, you know Ryan Long? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan and Danny. Yeah, yeah Danny just got, got his whole uh, YouTube channel demonetized for life for just talking about uh, the Unabomber. No in a, way. In a joking way. Yeah, it's like you watch the clip. It's like clearly they're, they're joking. It's clearly a comedy podcast. But the they, boys they gave cast, him a strike. I mean, I... Yeah, they gave him a strike for um, terrorism. So he's like a terrorist now. So it's demonetized for life. He can yeah, no longer monetize because of his that YouTube specific channel. type of violation. You're demonetized for life. Jeez. I mean, no. I I know Ryan just from the stand-up scene a little bit, and uh, like I've uh, been following all of their sketch stuff for a long time. That's crazy. And I know, like Steve will do it. Is like YouTube banned because he typed the yeah. wrong thing about gambling in a search bar. There yeah. are so many horror stories of people being banned for just like the most mundane comedy. TikTok. My friend Davy Jackson. I don't know if you know Davy. He's a stand-up. Mm-hmm. he did these biden videos where he was pretending to be the secret service and he'd be like Psh, you know the, the biden's wandering around lost or whatever and he's like this yeah. he's, you know it's it's a funny idea yeah, yeah he got yeah. banned off tiktok for that for impersonating the secret service some shit i don't know wow. but I, I guess it's, it's, it's such yeah. mundane shit that people are getting banned for it's just it's scary when you think about it like any day they can find sure. something they have all the power for. i mean it speaks to the whole idea of like you know 
Jack Conti, who's the founder of Patreon, used to talk about like how these platforms, while they've given voice to a lot of people's content, they haven't really empowered the artists and creators themselves to have audiences and communities who are there for them. It's really us serving the algorithm stuff. So we're like here and we're like, take this, take this. And yeah. we are serving the platforms. Are the platforms serving us? And I kind of oscillate between both scenarios because obviously like the platforms are amazing. They provide reach. They provide the ability to broadcast. But then you find yourself known and having attention, but no way to retain these people around who you are as yeah. the creator. So yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely going to be this new thing out of the social media bubble that will burst, that will be like ways to sort of cultivate your own audiences on your own individualized platform. That was the promise of NFTs in the blockchain, where if you got banned from YouTube, you could just take all your videos yeah. and just move it on to, no, to another one. But that fell through. That was like a first try. That was yeah, a first try. Yeah, it's Probably going to be a little. Well, that was if, Odyssey, if ever, right? Yeah. Odyssey was supposed to be like blockchain, yes. and 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 yes. then, then the fucking SEC no. sued them for uh, for their their library tokens and said it was a security, and then uh -huh. that's all. I no. think conceptually, also people couldn't really understand NFTs in a real way that was material that like they could actually like utilize. Like it was hard to figure out what well, what, what the, it was. The whole point, the reason they were interesting is because they weren't user friendly, right? Which made it not user-friendly right so no one wants to use it yeah and then aside from the, he does really not not that much to do with the cryptocurrency but when that crashed nft just kind of went with it mm. i wonder what like these people like i think gary v is still serving his community but like the nelk boys who made like oh yeah you know 75 million dollars selling nfts if they like ever touch them ever look at them ever do anything for the people who bought them i'm know. sure they don't if they follow through yeah because that was the idea like you buy it and then you're a customer for life and i like customer to what because now it's bubbled burst on nfts but they're yeah. still there like yeah. gary's still doing it i thought it was like you bought like a, a fucking picture for like a thousand dollars it was like it was yeah but it, a, it was like it was a, just a jpeg <laughs> like, it was but it grant what it yeah yeah i didn't get it either well you yeah. know but it grant like the nelp was i think they said like when you own our nfts then you get like private access to all our parties oh, to okay. show your nfc at the door but like, i'm sure they're not doing parties right. <laughs> like for their nft holders and you know mm. all that there's a lot of shady they shit. Are, maybe they are. there's a lot of i mean you look at what it's not even shady it was yeah. totally legal and no but people bought, bought into it the fluffiness of it it was just fluffy like not actually anything legitimately of value but people were buying in because they were buying it. It's like an emperor has no clothes scenario. I kept right people on. kept saying you should sell your shit as an NFT, and I'm like, <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me to to sell yeah. that. Like it's there's no value in in a digital. Like you can just download the fucking video the same way I do, and now you have it forever. Why mm -hmm. do you like it? You know what I mean? It's I don't Would know. I was nice always sketched out. Million dollars though. Yeah, I know. I missed out. I missed out on ripping <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. off. So <laughs> that bored ape, that bored ape. But I mean, I think the next frontier for the in the content space is going to be creators sort of converting whatever percentages they can of the f subscribers, followers, uh, and and whatever is out there into who the thousand true fans are. I mean, that's the only way to do it in a in a sustainable way. And if you're like Mr. Beast levels and YouTube ad, ad revenue is also a huge part of it if you're at that huge like numbers game. But even so, like they're building communities of people around them and whatever the platform is, like that's the world I'm kind of starting to discover as you go deeper down this sort of content rabbit hole. Yeah. Past the initial phase of building the first sort of hill to climb. Like what's up there? It's like okay, now who is gonna come with me on the hill that I'm standing on? Like which of you are coming for this like, you know, phase two or like the deeper level? And I feel like I would people, I would imagine that's the phase you're in too, trying to identify those. People's are, viewing habits are changing though, man. People are not yeah. searching out their content anymore. They're just accepting whatever the algorithm puts in front of them. And I'm, right. I'm finding myself doing that now too. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's just the algorithm that works really well. Mm -hmm. You know, it, um, this is the thing like you were talking about YouTube earlier. It, it's a tool that could be used for like a very powerful good for society if it was in the right hands trying mm -hmm. to actually like serve the people. But it's also a tool that can like enslave everybody as well, <laughs> you know, in a very disturbing way. So, yeah. yeah. Try not, I'm trying not to be a downer here, but I'm, that's just my <laughs> nature. I'm fucking Debbie and Downer. The only the redeemer yeah. is yeah. Joe Rogan. What's Joe that? Rogan. The only redeemer from slavery is Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. to free yeah. us all. Yeah. It yeah. does feel like, I mean, we talked about this all the time. That in the early days of the podcast, we're talking about like the double-edged sword of content and how it's like the, if there's there too much content, content overload, where, where does this lead? At what point when everyone's just like, blah, 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 yeah. blah, and there's no sense of like a deeper relationship with an artist to an audience. And 
it, it's like people become so used to this sort of free sampling, yeah. uh, you know, gluttonous appetite for bits oh, of entertainment. I wonder if there's any <laughs> connection between that and what's going on now with politics. Is this may be like a real jump, but like. Mm-hmm the behavior we've become so accustomed to of just like, like you said, not searching, not being active, but just letting things come to you. Mm. And now with like, like Biden there, everyone's kind of like, yeah, he might die, but like, <laughs> we're not going to like search for someone new. Like we're not going to like be proactively do anything at no. any point. Cause like, it's not like what we're accustomed to anymore. We're just sort of being like pacified. Served. almost. Served. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people Served and, silver spoon. And passive. People and, yeah. have always voted. I mean, I'm old. I'm I'm in my 40s. People mm-hmm. have always voted for who the news told them to vote for. Mm-hmm. People have who always the news done told that. Them. Yeah, I mean, you had your three main channels, you know, and then CNN and whatever. Like going back to the 90s, early 2000s, whoever mm-hmm. the news propped up as the guy, that that's who won. You know, mm-hmm. Ross Perot would have been the greatest president of all time. Our mm-hmm. country would be probably in a totally different, much more positive situation right now in my opinion if somebody like ross perot would have actually became president but he was made a laughing stock and bill clinton was made into the cool guy playing the saxophone Mm -hmm. and that was like every election this is how much power the media has had then how do you explain trump that's that's the new age that was the the rise of independent journalism that happened on youtube this is why Mm -hmm. we have this crackdown of censorship now because they realized this thing youtube is actually circumventing their media control because you had in 2016, if you remember, you may not know some of these guys like sticks, hex and hammer, you know, Tim pool. You got mm-hmm. a lot of these, they were getting way more views than CNN. CNN was like not getting a lot of views. Yeah. So sure. you had independent journalism becoming more powerful than like le- legacy media, mainstream journalism. Mm-hmm. And they've been slowly rolling that back with their algorithms. That's mm-hmm. where you got the authoritative sources shit. It's a death blow to independent journalism because now if you're six hex and hammer six, 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 and you want to do a video about, um, you know, Gaza or something, Mm -hmm. you're throttled, man. You're, you're just, you you got a red flag when you post a video like that. So you can't Mm -hmm. compete with mainstream journalism anymore. It's interesting because actually it's, it's an interesting point you're making about how Trump's popularity and rise coincided with legacy media falling and being able to control the narrative less because actually new media was pretty favorable to trump a lot of those outlets were like he he thrived on the fact that people were watching these clips in different spaces and so i just meant what was interesting about him winning in 2016 was like oh the same levers that were once being pulled do not control it all the power money and establishment in the primaries they were like for jeb bush he was the favorite picked candidate to be supported and he was taken out one of the first to be taken out and sort of trump proved that there was a new paradigm shift. social media got trump elected they were his campaign was the first ones to figure out how to fully utilize social media obama obama was on it yeah but he didn't exploit it to its obama used facebook you know what i'm saying saying, (laughs) trump used the rest (laughs) i'm saying no trump used the like the data yeah to to find his voters i'll bond he'll bond to do it you know you got to give obama credit too before he became president when he was running that dude he was totally different Mm -hmm. you know obama the candidate in 2007 2008 whatever he was electric Mm-hmm. He was he was saying things like this is not this America this is not Black America or White America this is the United States of America you know like right. amazing things that like made me go oh shit yeah this, <laughs> we're this guy's you know we're gonna come together fuck our skin color and all that and then he becomes yeah. president and it's like well I'm black 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 and he black 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 mm-hmm. you know I remember like, that oh, black and black black Americans. speech that was tough <laughs> <You know>? yeah <laughs> was that the second State of the Union I think <laughs> black and he black 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 that's what we are and that's what I am thank you <laughs> Pretty much. thank you. Yeah, you get black and black. Don't come back. <laughs> Jeez. No, um, no, that's gonna get you canceled right there. Yeah. What I just said. <laughs> no, um, you can't say yeah, that. all right. We, yeah. That's fine. Uh, in <laughs> post, kidding. we'll fix it in post. Why did he white? <laughs> don't get white. He said black and black. Don't come back. He's a white supremacist. Yeah. yeah oh wait, yeah. you're Jewish. I'm sorry. You can't be a white. I don't can't know how be that white works. Supremacist. Um, <laughs> I don't know how that works. I can be a white supremacist according to the far left. You yeah. know, okay. uh, according to the far right, I'm a Jew, which I am. But I'm not white, according to the far right. I am a white colonizer, according to the far left. And according to Kenneth Owens, you're a Jewish supremacist. Right, I guess so. So, I mean, the um, the far right and the far left. I think Kanye had (laughs) too much influence on her, dude. (laughs) She's not gonna. (laughs) The far left and the far right agree on Jew hatred. What can I tell you? I mean, we never we never can find our. It's hard to find. It's funny. It's you know. I've I've run into these circles, like you know, on YouTube. Like I think it was. Mm -hmm. 
2018 where I'd have, do you ever, do you remember a group called GDL? Mm, the Goyam Defense, my memory. the Goyam Defense League. Oh my God. No. And they would like raid channels. Like if you, I, I had like 200 live viewers and they would just raid my channel and just be like every like conspiracy theory, the dancing Israelis, you know, they would just uh-huh. turn it all into like, yeah, these people, there's, it's, 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 it's sad because when you see people like, like the idea that like one group of people, like one religion is the, 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 the source of like all the problems in the world. There's a certain point uh-huh. where that becomes like schizophrenic in a way, doesn't it? <laughs> like I would say so. Sure. You're like mentally unhealthy at that point. Anyway, I mean, it's a product of <laughs> resentful people when if there's a choice between blaming oneself for their problems and blaming others, people seldom blame themselves. Yeah. And that's very true on the left when you see college campus students complaining about their shitty lives or feeling like they've gotten a raw deal. It's very easy to blame capitalism or the system. We need yeah. to burn it down. And on the far right, you blame um, immigrants or the Jews or, you know, when you see a, a society in which it seems like there's this... Uh, unfair distribution of sorts and and rather than turning inward and saying how can i make my life better how can i better my habits how can i adopt better cultural practices and rituals it's easier to just blame other people and presume that it's not so the left will blame capitalism and the right will uh you know blame the secret cabal controlling us and the people behind the scenes rather than turning inward and cleaning their own bloody room you know so that's that's the idea that you see as a as a thread between those things, this this sort of it's, resentful blame. It's game. just weird to me because I, I don't. Do you do you know any Jews that are from like South Texas? I know Jews in Dallas, and that's not South. Uh, maybe some uh, in the cities and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know in your area. San Antonio? I, I don't ever see any at all. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> just, You're looking at two. <laughs> I don't think there's many in South Texas. So well, you I, know, Jew, Jew. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I just, I've always lived my life not thinking about the Jews. And then I run into mm-hmm. these people who are just like overly obsessed with it. And I'm like, I don't even, I've like maybe seen two Jew, <laughs> Jews in my entire life in person. <laughs> I mean, when I was in New York, I, I saw a lot more. I had neighbors right. that, were, that were Jewish and all that, but right. happen. not in South Texas. Happen. Yeah. yeah, we're in the cities in, 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 in the United States, like uh, New York, California, Chicago, Dallas. Uh, like communities, it's important. If you're, if you're observant or connected to the rituals, being near communities is important. It's mm-hmm. so, like yeah. being isolated is tough. Yeah, because you yeah. want to be near like Jewish schools or synagogues, and so they, they form, we form like communities in different, in different areas in the country. But that's interesting, like... Yeah, it's all Mexicans yeah. here, dude. It's just yeah. <laughs> That's it's okay, man. Bing Trip is doing <laughs> editing. You know, it's crazy. It's all Mexicans. Okay, it's interesting to for us. I guess we're in this like uh, tri-state area. All we see are Jews all the time. I mean, we're in the community. Yeah. We're both yeah. the very Jewish. Um, I haven't seen a non-Jew in years. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that weird, right? When you when these the the guy the G, the GDL the Goyim Defense League come in, yeah. I, you're just like, what is wrong with you guys? Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> it's, they it's, they made me a target for quite a while. Was, why you? Uh, why? They were going after just. It wasn't just me. Like that was part of how they got their word out for their shit was to go after small channels, flood it with like they, they would have like a hundred people in their Discord, and then all of a sudden flood your your channel with that hundred people, and your numbers mm-hmm. go up, and you go, oh shit, why do I, all of a sudden I got a hundred more people and it's all just GDL people, just the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews in the chat. And then, and then you start blocking them and then they eventually go away. It's about the mm-hmm. only thing you can do. You can't engage with them. You just block them, you know? All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> or mute them in the chat, you know? Yeah. They raid small channels, live streams to try to just like make us think. I've seen that before. I never well, realized they, it was so organized. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. At, at any level. I think it was, uh, the, I know, I know like the leader was called handsome truth. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, he was an actor, dude. dude the, you're, the, you're in like, you're in a great little corner of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I had to make a documentary about it. That was one of, you know, because I thought, because uh-huh. that guy was an actor, right? And then all of a sudden uh-huh. he's leading this group and they were supposedly anti-Trump. They were like pro-Bernie. Uh-huh. And it, I don't know. I, I just, I get so conspiratorial with things like, because uh-huh. all of a sudden they're now they're pro-Trump, right? After they're, you know, it's like. There was some, like the Steyer, that Democrat that ran for president, Steyer, something Steyer. Supposedly yeah. there was rumors that like he was funding them to like make Trump supporters look bad. So anytime You mean this was... guy? <laughs> the blonde dude? Who would, yeah, like, the, yeah, the guy that was, was... trying to shake Bernie's hand. Bernie, yeah. Bernie, shake my hand. Bernie. <laughs> you, you think about it. If you're trying to label your opponent as a Nazi, 
And then yeah. every every like if you can like send a group of actual Nazis into channels where I was an open Trump supporter at the time, like everybody knew mm-hmm. I was a Trump supporter. Yeah. You send a bunch of Nazis in there and then people come and go, oh, maybe Nazis, Trump supporters are Nazis, you know. Hmm. That's just a theory. I'm very conspiratorial. I, I don't like trust that. anything. <laughs> I saw that documentary you made on the uh, Trump shooter. Yeah, that was, that was very uh, thorough. How'd you do that so quickly? A documentary? Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty. It was a thorough, 13 minute yeah. documentary. I just oh. I, I I went. I was obsessed with it when it happened. Pretty long. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, okay. So let's drop was, a, let's drop some gems here. Give us some hot takes. What do you think happened there? Oh Give man, the I can't trip. I mean, everybody thinks it's an inside job. I I think it could possibly be an inside job, but. <laughs> It's just when you have that much ineptitude, like every step of the way where you could have done something, you you, you screw up. At a certain mm-hmm. point, you start asking, like, is this ineptitude or is this something deeper, you know? Mm-hmm. And you see the new video that came out where, like, it's filmed from, you know, to Trump's left, the guy that got shot, mm-hmm. the one that lived. Well, he was okay. filming a video and you can see the dude's head on the roof. You can see him on the roof. So if you can see him from the crowd, the dude's wandering around on the roof. How does the Secret Service, how does nobody else see him? I mean, the crowd's mm-hmm. sitting there, gun, gun, and then the police swarm the building. This is like five, ten minutes before, but yet only those people saw him with the gun. There's no angle the police could see on the roof to see this guy. with. So much shit just doesn't add up. But we just, I just don't know. My, my instinct would be inside job. They've tried everything to get rid of this guy. This is the ultimate where you're going to land when everything else fails. And mm-hmm. I, I, you know, it's not like they haven't killed a president before. Right. <laughs> Did you see this guy who's a green beret? I'm blanking on his name. He was on Chris Willings, like a modern, uh, modern wisdom. I think it's called Chris Williamson. Yeah. Yeah. He really was doing an analysis of it. He was saying like at a certain point, most of the time it's, it's incompetence, but at a, past that, when there's so much incompetence, it's hard to believe that this could all have just been, you yeah, know, when the uh, fully ineptitude, but it's it's like you know, with Occam's razor, the most simple explanation is the is usually the one, but but that's not always but, the case, though. <laughs> yeah, that just the problem with conspiracy nice theories and... is sometimes they are true. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I mean when it's as blatant as like a rooftop that a five year old would know. If you put a five year old in charge of Secret Service, it'd be like, we need somebody on that roof. Like yeah. that level of of ineptitude is when you start questioning, and then when you have. You know, the head of the Secret Service is Kamala Harris's, you know, friend, basically. The, the, uh, really? Cheeto. Yeah, Cheeto was, uh, no, no, not Kamala Harris. Sorry. Joe, Joe Biden. Ke- uh, Keto was, Biden. yeah, Keto, Cheeto was Joe Biden's, sec- uh, Secret Service protection. And they became uh-huh. really friendly. And then that's how she got promoted to head of Secret Service. Well, she, yeah. she was also very, very close with Cheney, I think. <sighs> I, I haven't I heard she, that, but it's very t- possible. T- Tim Tim Dillon on his Patreon went deep yeah, he into went deep, her. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and like, and she, and he's, I think he said like she she comes from the bowels of the deep state. Oh. Like she she like has seen some stuff. And she babysat Baron as a kid, and he shat on her face. <laughs> <laughs> You're making that. So one she up. was pissed what? <laughs> when Baron was a baby. She was his babysitter. I'm making that up. He shat yeah. on her. He face. shat on her. It's ah! good. It's so he it's threw good, up though, on like, her. The origin story. And it went story. bad. And she said, "I vow vengeance." No. Um, <laughs> That's her Joker origin story. (laughs) You know, I have these scars, Baron. (laughs) Kicked on my face. (laughs) Um, Wow. I like this. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done that in a long time. The Joker impression. Uh, Down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, Conspiracy theories do sometimes come true. So... And sometimes are correct, but I I don't know. I've been. I don't want to believe it. Yeah, that it's it was a little ins- bit scary. Well, be, be, well, because if if that is the case, he can't become president, because then he's gonna have access to all this information. Who? Trump. Oh. So um, meaning, like, I don't I don't want to think about the next couple of months. Mean if that's truly the case. Yeah. I expect I I, ex- I, I expect more uh, attempts on on his life. I mean, the, uh, maybe yeah. they got wise up to realize, like, oh, this is terrible. Like, um. I just, I think it was actually like not a very smart move for the Democrats to do, you know, mm-hmm. like if they really <laughs> wanted to kill Trump, like you're just making him more popular and everybody's. If, they, if you it. shoot at the king, you don't miss. That's yeah. the whole thing. Best right? not miss. Best not miss. You look at the. <laughs> oh, Trump, here's yeah. what I wanted to say. Did, did, what do you think of this theory? At the end of the RNC, if you noticed and paid attention, they played uh, theme music at the end. And uh, they wrapped up the RNC after Trump's like hour and a half speech with a song. Um, 
So pause that for a second. In, did you ever see the movie The Sum of All Fears? No. Okay. In the movie The Sum of All Fears, it's with Ben Affleck, Morgan Freeman. Basically, the premise is that uh, a bunch of fascists, rogue fascists uh, from the Nazi Germany want to establish the Fourth Reich and re- Established Germany as a superpower. Yeah, I like how so you they put tr- that uh, that accent at the end of Reich. What was- You're talking to two real Jews. <laughs> you never, never hear heard the <laughs> You probably never heard ch before. The fourth Reich. <laughs> yeah, sorry. To this is refreshing you. for you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they want to frame the United States and Russia into a war with each other. So they set off a nuclear bomb in Baltimore and they frame Russia to uh, to be responsible for it. They use like a Russian patsy. And it sets up a nuclear war potentially between the United States and Russia, but it's all set up by these rogue fascists in Germany. At the end of the movie, obviously, it doesn't happen, and they, through back channels, discover, like, the, you know, they come to terms in the peace, and they come to peace, and they're signing a treaty, like a nuclear disarmament deal. And while that's going on, there's a montage of members of the deep state who were behind it getting assassinated, one after the other. And uh, Leif Schreiber is one of the guys working for the U.S., and he's killing off some of the bad guys. And then the final bad guy gets into a car, puts something into his car, it explodes. And while that's going on, the music playing is an opera song called Nessum Dorma. Nessum Dorma. You know, like that kind of mafia yeah, scene. It's a really good scene. You, you know, need good yes, opera. Yeah. Have you seen the movie recently? Yeah. Or you no, I just, I, just I know it. I just know it. And I watched the scene recently. <laughs> and, I, and I'll get to why. <laughs> and they're all being killed rather dramatically. It's a really cool, badass scene. At the end of the RNC, after a bunch of country music for three days and rock and roll, he decides to have an opera singer come out and sing what song? Nessum Dorma, the same song yeah. from this movie in which all the members of the deep state get assassinated as revenge. But he, and and Trump, who, who knows that reference besides you though? Everybody on the internet was talking about it. Um, Nessum Dorma. Yeah. Anybody and anybody's hearing the sum of all fears right now? No. Trump knows exactly what he's doing. Now I'm just going down the pink trip rabbit hole here. Who would make that connection? Because it was such a random choice. Who knows the sum of all fears besides it's a big you? Hit. It's a big hit movie with a very... <laughs> I saw it in theaters and I don't know. It. It's a very iconic scene, Michael. I'm just I, saying. I saw the movie and, and I have no recollection And if you that. watch the RNC, they've been playing three days of country rock music and then Nessum Dorma as Trump is waving to everybody. And if you just watch that scene in the sum of all fears and then watch the end of the RNC, you'll get chills. And Trump's like, we're going to do what we can do. Don't worry, <laughs> folks. Just wait. You'll see what happens. I I'm think, getting you back. It's a very chilling thing. If you just watch the end scene and then watch Nessum Dorma. If it's true. And then watch the end of the RNC, you're going to be like, everyone is writing on Twitter in that little sub corner of the internet. Trump knows what he's doing. Nessum Dorma. If any of that's <laughs> true and I'm Trump, the, last, the thing I'm doing is going like, all right, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Like message received. Oh. Message received. You think he's like I'll back off of what you want me to back off of. Just let me get to the to the White House. That's how I that's I don't know. No? I think I think he's, he's gonna take on the deep state. The What's message the... being sent is from the Nessum Dorma is I have my own people, folks, and just just you wait. Coming yeah, in so know, strongly, so strongly, pink trips. <laughs> so smart. You play along, like what he's saying. You play along, yeah. you act like you're gonna play ball, and then as soon as you get in, you fucking flip the switch on yeah see see this this is a conspiracy theorist who doesn't actually believe them we're, we're like no no we believe them and that's why you have to play ball uh-huh. yeah. you guys like, are practical conspiracy <laughs> theorists yeah. i'm taking it too far it well, was just a cool uh analogy to draw if you watch that type in when we're done with this episode just type in some of all fears and see yeah everyone is like sounds... typing in nessum dorma because it was so random that an opera song nessum dorma would come up and i know it's obscure i know um i know but you know who's in the final scene cameo of that movie some of all fears yeah. after the credits who Donald Trump. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 oh. I don't have a – look, I'll, I'm going to vote for Trump, but mm. I don't have a lot of faith that he's going to be uh, as crazy as everybody thinks he's going to be. I think it's going to be very similar to the first – Yeah, first I, think I think so he's going to try to bring everybody together, try to be the uniter, which um, to me what we need is someone that's like not the uniter but the subtractor of government. You know, someone yeah, who's like, for sure. I don't know if we really need the FBI. I don't know if we need all these three-letter organizations. Can we just shut it down? I, I'd like to the, the Texan baby. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very much at the point where I don't see any solution to our problems without just extremely reducing the size of the federal government back to maybe yeah. what it was meant to be in the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, baby! Is that a big lo- a spirit in the uh, like? 
area you live in and like is do people share that kind of view it's more well, than even just republican or conservative it's pretty like libertarian constitutional yeah i don't know about all the labels i just know that we have a corrupt ass government and adding mm-hmm. more, just going in there and be like well i'm gonna do this bill it's not mm-hmm. gonna do anything like it needs right. to be basically stripped like it's mm-hmm. just completely out of control you drain know? the swamp that's what we're gonna do <laughs> um very cool so. uh because he, he, he put the swamp in his cabinet last time, so I don't have much yeah, faith. Right. I, I think that, I mean, having a second term for Trump would mean he's already won. There's nothing else to win other than to try to have a good presidency in some way. Like, there's no, like, that's the, that's, that's the prize. And also, a lot of the hysteria around Trump doesn't hold weight anymore because he's already been the president yeah. and then not the president. As much as people say, he'll never leave. I'm like, even though he didn't concede, fair enough, he should have done that properly, but he wasn't the president the last four years so most of that stuff just doesn't carry weight anymore I, have, uh, about it. I honestly believe like we're at a point in this country if we don't do something now mm-hmm. to like rein in the federal government mm-hmm. it, it, we're like at the last stages of being able to do something before the corruption is just we might already be there it might be too late to do anything about it but yeah i mean we're gonna be like venezuela here pretty soon mm. well content will save us all am i right <laughs> We're all going to be banned. You're yeah, going to exactly. gonna need to get a license, $100, $100 a day to broadcast. Oh, right. Approval of your edits. This is misinformation and yeah. misdirection and the use of clips that are not fair use. Uh, but hope that doesn't happen. I hope it goes in more free direction and the tide shift. There's an American spirit that has uh, proven over the years to still be resilient. So in the spirit of that, so. let, let's keep creating and be free to do so. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I hope, I wish I could be as uh, positive about it as you are. <laughs> it's a temperamental thing. What can I say? I'm an optimist. Um, where can people find you? Let the people know. At Pink Trip, P I N G T R 1 P, pretty much mm-hmm. everywhere except TikTok. You'll find, <laughs> you'll just find my shit ripped off on TikTok, but Facebook, Not Instagram, surprising. YouTube. You know, but All right, guys, me on listen. YouTube. YouTube if you're not following, you've definitely seen it already, but this is the man behind the genius yeah, that right. is Pink Trip, behind Dude, the. Behind the amazing edits uh, and hilarious content, give him a follow. Support him out there if you're watching, and go follow Pink Trip. He's amazing. Any final words? Yeah, just Michael? give him a follow. Thanks. Thanks for making everything you're making. Keep it up, please. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I love it. Appreciate and I'll see it. you at the revolution. <laughs>